The actual program under discussion will be written in C++. The C++ language will be used to coordinate the use of software ingredients, each defined in the C language. GTK is an API written in C, and it provides the ability to create graphical user interfaces. As mentioned earlier, it requires an application context. It made sense to me to have a file named application.cpp. This will be the C++ implementation file that encompasses everything regarding application initiation, as well as application management. The intent of this file is to define the software instructions that meet the requirements for application initiation under GTK. Later on, it will be accompanied by a header file named application.hpp. For now, the application.cpp file contains instructions for starting up a GTK application. This application will start up and an opportunity will exist to bind a GTK window to the application. The C++ code will be a mirror match to the code written in C, at least in the initial stages. The code as written in C is simple, straightforward, and no need exists to shroud it in excessive boilerplate. That is not to say that excessive boilerplate or boilerplate code in general is a bad thing. Sometimes that is exactly what is needed. In this case, however, less code is better as it leads to code that is easier to read and maintain. During this process, it is best to avoid the distraction of code typographical formatting, such as how many tabs do you tab over, how do you indent code, etc. A tool by the name of A-Style will be used to format code. The A-Style program contains many options for formatting code. Since it will be in a script file, it is important to mark the script file as executable. Using Chmode 777, the script file will be marked as executable and can be ran immediately. When the format code script is run, it will line up the code in a perfectly consistent fashion. That way we can continue writing code and periodically reformat it, all the while confident in the sense that the code will have a consistent structure, a consistent appearance. The gedit environment detects the reformat and prompts us to click the reload button. The code so far follows the prescribed formula indicated in the GTK documentation. The create function contains the code for application initiation. What is needed is code for establishing the main window for the program. That code will exist in the function named activate. When the GTK application gets going, it will call the activate function, which will in turn bind a window to the application. Before we continue, we want to ensure the window has parameters that uniquely identify it. Therefore, as the window is defined, we will give it a custom title and size. Getting the application window just right is equally as important as getting the application done correctly.
as you see, one of the instructions is to set the title for the window and set the default size of the window. There are cases where you can write instructions out of order as long as you have all the required instructions in place by the time you compile the code. The title of the window is defined in a C++ string variable. GTK knows nothing about C++. So during this process, there will be subtle conversions between C++ and C, and between C and C++. That reflects the reality of application development for non-trivial applications where both C++ and C are used in tandem. Finally, we have GTA Widget Show All to ensure that the application will render the window once it's ready and bound to the application. A quick access to the terminal window is available through gedit. And I'm going to copy the format code script. I'm going to make a copy of it into send code to VM script. The reason why I do a copy rather than a brand new file in this way, it is the quickest and most efficient way to bring along the file permissions and any starter code or statements or comments in the file being referenced. In this case, I don't have to do chmode 777 on every script file that I create and I don't have to remember to type hashtag bin bash at the top of the script file. So by doing a copy, I quickly establish a new script file. So let's start up the build server, the local build environment. And we're going to use this send code to VM script to copy the source code that we've written, the application.cpp file, to the build server. Once on the build server, we will then compile the code and grab a copy of the compiled result, the executable file, run it, and see how close did we get to the ideal in terms of the software development. The directory listing shows that the source code file exists on the build server now under a folder titled Newsreader 7. We can now form a command line to build and compile this application.cpp file into an executable. There was one little issue with the script. Instead of just copying the source code to the root folder, Newsreader 7, we actually wanted to copy the source folder in its entirety. That way we can keep the source code on the build server separate from the executables. On a build server, the executables that you generate there will be more activity involved with that compared to source code. 
So by keeping source code and build separate, you, you give yourself the opportunity to more neatly manage the compiled result when it comes to extracting it or in some cases removing, deleting the source code, I'm sorry, deleting the build code and then starting again with a fresh build batch. So I've created a build directory and will change into that build directory. Once there, formulate a command line where the code will be compiled. Again, this is hand typing the compile instructions on the command line. Later on, we will consolidate these instructions into a script file. However, we will let Bakefile manage that process for us. In so doing, we will be able to accumulate more source code files, accumulate them rapidly, and build them with hardly missing a step in terms of converting those to a compiled result. But as it stands now, there are a few issues with the code that we've compiled. The individual lines are syntactically correct, but one of the most common issues you run into when writing code in C and C++ is usage issues. That is, reference reference to dependencies, uh, referring to the correct include files, referring to the correct object names, and referring to the correct function names and variables. So, both C and C++ requires that the definition, actually the declaration, of a function or variable is known prior to its use. And in this case, by reorganizing the code, putting activate before create and putting create before main means that both the declaration and the definition are understood in the correct order. And so the application ran. We successfully obtained a window. But we need to ensure that we avoid going stir crazy with the ordering of dependencies in the code itself. And so C and C++ allows you to declare what a variable and function is prior to the point which you use it. And that means you can state the function definitions at the top or declarations at the top and then define them elsewhere. And see, these are called function prototypes. And function prototypes give you a much greater control over the process.